So, can we not simply prescribe a piece of Bach to a patient suffering from angina? 30 minutes of harp for kidney stones? A good shot of Led Zeppelin or Leonard Skinner for arthritis? Before we can approach an answer, let us look at what types of patients have historically benefited from music therapy. The daughter of a colleague of mine sustained a brain injury due to an athletic injury. She had severe short-term memory loss, yet she could sing hymns in church from memory, songs she brought up from deep in her long-term memory. She and others like her set daily tasks to music, helping them to put concepts they had lost back together to remember them. In the movie Philadelphia, the character played by Tom Hanks is a lawyer dying of AIDS. In this film based on a true story, Denzel Washington playing his homophobic lawyer is representing Hanks in a lawsuit against his former employer for wrongful dismissal. Pause the lecture here and watch La Mama Morta to see how this operatic aria serves to give the character an emotional release. I once had an autistic fifth grade student who took percussion lessons from me. She was highly literal and became upset when other students in the band would improvise. By the end of the year, while her musical skills were not at grade level, I and her classroom teacher saw improvement in her social skills due to her participation in the band. Her musical experience was, in that way, therapeutic. If patients in the ICU are able to articulate their needs, they may be helped by music that masks the sound of the machines monitoring their conditions and in so doing aid in relaxation. Patients with developmental disabilities of varying severity can be helped to function socially through group musical activities. Music can also help patients with emotional traumas such as post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, a condition we see in soldiers returning from war. Aging people are often helped tremendously through music and its association with their life stories. Perhaps you, like I, have had the experience of being moved against your will by an overly loud car stereo system. While we think of music as an oral experience, those with hearing impairments can benefit from rhythmical music experiences, hearing through the other senses. It is often difficult to define mental health but when a patient is having difficulty coping with the stresses of life, music may begin to bring about balance. New mothers and fathers instinctively sing, or if not sing, speak melodically or rhythmically to their newborns. Newborns and children in utero do respond to sound and mothers in labor benefit as well. My niece Amy, a licensed music therapist, used music to help her relax and focus during the births of her two children. Chemotherapy sessions can be made more tolerable when music is added to the environment. This is of course one of our main topics. Palliative care, to my way of thinking, would be defined as uh, using music with a patient who is in chronic pain. If I am mistaken on this, please let me know. Again, I refer to my niece, Amy. 
When she was studying piano as an undergrad, she had a marked dislike for country music and told me so on several occasions because she knew I liked country music. Finally, I told her that she should stop listening to the music and instead listen to the stories, since the words are the important factor in country music. She took my advice finally, found a song with a story she liked, and experienced personal growth. She grew to at least appreciate country music. Patients with physical disabilities can be helped to gain flexibility through gentle rhythmic movements involved in playing instruments, movement, or dance. A colleague and mentor of mine was stricken with rheumatic fever in his youth which affected his vocal cords, leaving him with a speech impediment. He would be speaking normally when suddenly it was as if his words got stuck and syllables would repeat like an old record with a skip. Curiously, this impediment never showed itself when he was singing. The country singer Mel Tillis is another example of a person who used music to overcome a speech impediment. Patients in substance abuse recovery programs can, according to the American Music Therapy Association, use music to manage symptoms of withdrawal, develop new coping skills, discover and explore thoughts and feelings underlying addiction, and improve relationships with others. Music can and has helped teenagers process the physical, psychological, and emotional changes they are going through. Since music speaks so deeply to us, it can help a person hear when words alone cannot. Victims of various types of abuse can use music to come to terms with their emotions and experiences. This is practically a subgenre of country music. Pause here and listen to Independence Day by Martina McBride. Not much more needs to be said about the power of music to the visually impaired except for the names Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Jose Feliciano, and others. When one sense is denied, Others oftentimes are heightened.